okay. So before we start, okay. Sekarang ni, okay. So sekarang apa yang saya nak kamu tahu ialah in this ah uh, tutorial what you have to know is okay apa yang kamu kena ada dan kena tahu ialah first is for lecture 1 kita kena tahu this step ni equivalence punya logical equivalent punya ni which is ni uh, uh, equivalent to what uh, maksudnya dia men, this statement is equivalent to this okay other than that is this law True stable law. Okay, you have to know this law. Kamu boleh rujuk yang ni. Tak pun nanti kan untuk untuk exam. You have to, maksudnya awak boleh print yang ni. Ni dan yang ni, page ni. Supaya kamu boleh rujuk. Sebab kita dalam midterm exam nanti kita subjektif tau. Bila kita exam subjektif, you have to, you 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 can see your note but saya tak nak kamu ambil masa lama untuk tengok semua rumus-rumus yang ada, semua law yang ada, uh, okay, um, properties yang ada. Kalau boleh, maksudnya yang ni jadikan kamu punya rujukan, which is kamu print je uh, siap-siap. Jadi apa yang kamu nak rujuk dah ada dekat depan. So no need to open the slide then find uh, while you are doing the exam. Okay, this is the first law that I want you to refer for this tutorial. Then other law is this rule of inference. You have to know this table. Uh, you have to refer to this table, rule of inference table. Okay, so that's all that you have to know. Then we go to tutorial two. Okay, in this tutorial. First is we want to know how to, to refer. Maksudnya macam mana kita nak rujuk. Rujuk yang mana. Uh, Uh, which is rule yang mana yang betul Okay untuk dirujuk Okay so now First Macam kita buat Apa programming First you have to define your parameter uh, Macam tu juga Sebab kita make this script tu More to programming right So the logic thinking While you are doing programming Inside this mathematical script Okay so now It is below freezing now Please define whether Okay, I use P. P is equal to below freezing. Okay, you can write it. Below freezing now. Okay, then Q ialah apa? Therefore, it either below freezing. Okay, we already uh, defined below freezing the parameter. Then, the new parameter will be raining now. Here, please define your parameter first. Okay, after you define your parameter, then please complete this sentence. Okay, first is, okay, if I mention about per, uh, premise, if I mention about uh, hypothesis, we, I, I'm referring to the first statement, second statement, third statement, then go to the conclusion. The statement before the conclusion is premise or hypothesis. We call it as premise or hypothesis. Okay, so now. It is below freezing now. This is how we symbol it. P, below freezing now. Then the conclusion will be, what is it? Therefore, it is either below freezing or raining now. Okay, either, right? Uh, right uh, okay, so P or Q because of O here. Okay, so here, can ni. Ini ialah kita punya notation. So now, state which rule of inference that we use. Okay, go to your lecture 2, then open the fundamental of proof punya slide. Go to the rule of inference punya table. So this is referring to rule mana? P, P, O, Q. Okay, so kat sini kita tengok nombor dua ni kan. Rule of inference. P, P, O, Q. Ha, nampak tak kat sini. Just now P, the conclusion is P, O, Q. So, for problem one, we know that we are referring to the addition rule. Ha, boleh? Boleh, boleh. Okay. So, nombor dua problem tu. 
kita pergi problem tu ya. Uh, okay. Okay, problem tu. State which rule of inference is used in the following argument. Ah, kat mana? Ah, yang ni. Ah, sama juga. Define dulu. Tak semestinya kamu juga guna P, Q macam yang rule of inference tu tau. Kalau contoh yang saya guna R. R is below freezing. Below freezing. Okay. Then, and raining now. R, S. S is yang tekan dia sebagai raining now. Okay. So, kat sini... Uh, raining now. Okay. So, therefore, it is below freezing now. Okay. So, dia punya statement ni akan jadi R and S. Lepas tu, dia punya conclusion ialah apa? It is below freezing now. R. So, tengok nota sekarang. Ini, ini rule mana? Siapa tahu? Simplification. Good. Okay. So, tengok rule. Ha, semua orang, ha, semasa saya terangkan ni, semua orang buka rule tu. Okay. So, this is simplification. Okay. So, this is simplification rule. Okay. So, here. Finish with problem tu. Then, we go to problem 3. Okay. For problem 3, same as previous. First, please define. Kenapa saya suruh define? Kalau macam dalam exam, this is the jalan kerja yang yang kamu boleh gain mark tau. Maksudnya, kalau contohnya, kalau ni if it is snow today, PP ialah snow today. Okay, yang kamu wakilkan ni pun saya nak tahu. Uh, which is, it, it will give you marks. Okay, snow today. Lepas tu, then university will be closed. Okay, yang ni saya kamu tulis lah. This is Q, university will be closed. The university is not close today. So, it refer to the Q right now. Right, right. Okay, parameter dia sama. Then, therefore, it did not snow today. So, no new parameter involved. So, we can write a premise for this is, it is snow today. P, then Q. Then, the university is not close. Not Q. Right. So, the conclusion here is not P, not snow. Right. So, this is the rule for. So, the answer for this is rule of rule apa? Cuba tengok table tu. Ini ialah rule. Modus stolen. Ah, modus stolen. Okay, modus Holland. Okay, so until uh, problem 3, I hope you know how to refer. Maksudnya, please, ma please, uh, maksudnya kita master. Maksudnya macam mana kita nak uh, nak refer yang mana dah tak salah dah. Okay, so for problem 4, uh, macam ni. Problem 4 first is define dulu. Uh, raining. This is contohnya yang ni raining saya nak buat dia sebagai R. Lepas tu not have a barbecue today. Yang ni saya nyatakan dia sebagai B. Uh, okay. Not have a barbecue today is as a B. If you do not have a barbecue today then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Ini ialah T. Uh, this is new statement right? Therefore, it is rain today. Rain dah ada. Then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Okay, so for this, first statement is what? R, then B, right? So, after that, B, the second premise is B, then T. Betul? Lepas tu, therefore, dia punya conclusion ialah apa? It is if it rain today, R, then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Then, T. Okay. Hmm. Ini rule mana? Ah, okay. Hypothetical. 
silogism. Ha, tengok hypothetical silogism tu sekarang. Cuba relate kan apa yang saya ni. Ha, maksudnya, every time you define ni one mark, one mark, one mark, then you can uh, write this symbol. Ha, it's also another mark, then you can conclude it. Ha, then you get the full mark for this. Okay. Uh, Madam. Hmm. Uh, nak tanya hmm. macam untuk the the premise B it says we mm -hmm. do not have barbecue today so is it a B or a not B it depend if you uh, define it as a B then you put it as a B here because we'll not have is also negation symbol right yeah but if you put it as not B here then you put not B, then this is not B also. It, it depends while you are defining here. If you define B as a have a barbecue, have a barbecue, then you have to write this. Uh, ah, if you okay. define B, if have uh, not have, which is not have, right? Okay, mm. you already mentioned not, so no need to not your friend okay uh, it will relate what you are defining previously but when we define we must define b la. we cannot define straight away define not b equals to not having ah, barbecue yes, today yes, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. when you are defining b you have to define b is half a, a barbecue today oh, okay okay understood okay hmm, welcome okay and then uh, other question okay uh for problem five okay for problem five use rule of inference to show that the hypothesis imply the conclusion yang ni kita kena uh, uji whether it is valid statement or not okay first please uh yang ni kita kita define dulu okay so here if uh so saya define dulu eh randy Yang ni saya nyatakan dia sebagai W. Kamu buat ayat yang betul lah ya. Saya, saya tak tulis balik. Ha, kamu buat W sama juga dengan apa. Okay. Randy work hard is also is W also. Then this is. Then he is a dull boy. A dull boy ni as D. Saya define dia sebagai D. Okay. Apa-apa pun kamu boleh define dia. Then another parameter here is. He will not get the job. Okay. Now I I I define this sebagai J is will get job. Ah, saya define this sebagai will get job. Ah, yang ni yang soalan tadi tu kan. Ah, okay. So contradict with this kan? Nanti kita buat tu kita kena betak not. Okay. So here, uh, okay. Ah, uh, job. Randy will will not get the job. So habislah kan kita ada berapa parameter je? D, W and J. Okay so now we go for the uh, statement. Maksudnya how can we produce a symbol for that? So for premise one, premise one, premise one for this is Randy work hard which is W. Sorry, jauh sikit lah. Okay, W. So for premise two, what? Randy work hard, then he is a dull boy. W, then D. Okay. Then Randy is a dull boy, then he will not get the job. Premise three is Randy is a dull boy. Then he will not get a job, not J. Because just now I, I defined as Randy get, uh, get a job as a J. Okay, so it imply the conclusion which is Randy will not get a job. Randy will not get a job which is so just now job 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 ni apa? Will not get a job is not G. Okay, this is the conclusion. So here our task is try to relate first, second, second and third or or is not in order is also can. Kalau dia tak ada dalam order pun tak apa. Kita nak cuba kaitkan yang pertama, kedua dengan yang pertama, pertama dengan yang ketiga. So that at the end, kita dapat dia punya conclusion yang ni. 
Okey. Apa yang kamu kena buat sekarang ialah refer table-table yang saya suruh refer pada awal tadi. Okey. So now first. First is we take the premise one. W is premise one just now, right? Okay, this is the solution. Okay, to prove whether this is the valid or not. Okay, so second, okay, is not J. Macam mana kita nak keluarkan not J? But here, not J tu dia bersambung dengan D. D ada dekat mana? D ada dekat premise dua. So now, we put premise dua dulu. Then D as a premise two. As mentioned in the question. So, tiga. Okay. So, now tiga ni ialah kita nak cuba relatekan tiga tu dengan P tiga ni. Which is kita nak keluarkan D. Supaya kita dapat not J at the end. Okay. So, now kita nak keluarkan D. Kita boleh keluarkan D daripada premise satu dan premise dua. Macam mana kita nak keluarkan D? Yang ni kita nak refer kat mana? Refer dekat rule of inference sekarang dia guna, dia guna yang mana? W, W, D dan kita dapat D. Kita guna rule apa tu? From 1 and 2, kita guna rule apa? W, 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 then D. So, kita guna apa tu? Modus ponen. Okay, so good. Modus ponen. Okay, kita guna modus ponen daripada 1 dan 2, kita dapat D keluar. Kita keluarkan D. So, now, here, we have to, okay, so we have another information which is we have 4 which is the third premise itu ialah D jadi not J. Okay. So, ini kita ambil daripada premise 3. Kita tak buat apa-apa. But here, ha, kita dah sampai ke kita punya conclusion which is kita nak dapat yang ni kan. So, kalau D, D imply not J. So, jadi not J guna guna mana? Guna rule mana? Or this one and also, right? Hmm. From 3 and 4. Okay, so we get our final answer here. Okay, faham tak? Ah, ini ialah tujuannya kita nak tahu kita punya statement tu betul ke tidak. Kalau contoh ya, kalau orang dia audit macam kita kita ada programming kita nak tahu the the rule that we involve in our algorithm tu betul ke tidak kita boleh prove guna yang ni kita refer dekat rules mana okey kita boleh refer kat law mana to get the the final answer so kalau uh, kita punya susunan tu betul then our uh, our system yang rule yang kita terbitkan tu bolehlah digunakan itu how do we prove okey so now Ya. Yeah. Macam yang sebelum ni kan saya uh, ada contoh tu eh, uh, yang mudah lah. Contohnya uh, kalau dia just now macam if if dia dapat uh, apa dia dapat less than 2 uh, greater than 2 dia punya pointer dan sekarang ni dia dia macam mana ya? maksudnya dia greater than 2 dan dia mendaftar subjek. Uh, okay. Dan Premis yang seterusnya, dia mendaftar subjek. Okey, dan seterusnya, macam itulah. Tapi dia punya rule tu macam kalau kamu nak buat syarat untuk algoritma nak, nak untuk syarat pendaftaran subjek, yes, boleh nampak kat situ. Nanti kamu akan nampak jumpa dalam problem dekat komputer. Uh, how do you program? Okey, harap faham ya. Hmm. Okey, so now here for, before we uh, go for the problem C, what I want you to do is, ah, macam ni kan? Okay. Contohnya, kita ada, ah, okay. Yang ni ialah saya search tadi. Sebab kalau untuk rule of inference ni, kalau rule of inference ni kita, kita kena ada banyak-banyak, supaya kita dapat skill tu, kita kena cuba banyak latihan. Okay, this is uh, the uh, how I search for rule of inference online quiz. Okay, one that I suggest you to go through is this, time foundry ni. Ataupun yang lain pun boleh juga. Okay, kat sini saya rasa macam bagus sebab dekat sini... Ah, Kamu boleh buat kamu punya statement, lepas tu dia dah, dah tahu kamu punya solution. Okay, nampak tak which rule of inference that you we, uh, use uh, to this 
Okay, your answer. The symbol. Okay. So, this is one example lah. Dan seterusnya, kamu boleh tengok juga sampai bawah ni lah apa yang dia buat. Okay, so kalau yang ni, uh, the premise dia apa, imply the conclusion apa. Okay, so kamu boleh tengok jawapan dia. Ataupun kalau untuk subjek lain, programming ke apa ke, dia memang ada dekat sini. Dia punya soalan-soalan uh, yang kamu boleh go through dekat sini eh. Okay, ni salah satu. Dan apa yang saya nak kamu tengok lagi ialah Rule of inference example with answer. Okay, for this. For example, hmm, macam ni. Contoh eh, kita nak tengok rule of inference daripada lecture orang ni. Okay, ah, uh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay, this is the, the lecture for this person. Letak dulu. Okay, ni kan. Ah, uh, Daripada lecture orang ni kan. Sebab kita nak rule of inference macam dekat tutorial tak cukup tau. Dia punya masalah macam problem 5. Tu oh, tak cukup. Saya rasa memang tak cukup. So you you want to to apa? You have to do extra exercise. So kat sini dekat dekat lecture orang ni dia ada how do you represent? Okay, untuk yang ni then you can you can follow the 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 notes here then the 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 example here. Uh, for example, ha ni. Building a valid argument. Okay, this is the conclusion dia. So, step one, step two, how they relate one to another uh, premise to get the final answer. Then, this is the 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 example. So, cuba. Cuba. This is the hypothesis uh, yang dia dapat selepas dia simbolkan daripada semua statement yang ada. Okay, lepas tu macam mana dia boleh come up with this to, to, to prove that T is the final answer. Ha, yang tu kamu kena dapat the skill. Mula-mula cuba dulu, lepas tu tengok macam mana orang ni dapat. Okey, ataupun kadang-kadang kita boleh berbeza dengan dia kalau kita ada cara kita tapi towards the end kita akan dapat jawapan yang sama. Okey. This is the quantifier dan boleh tengok lagi contoh-contoh uh, contoh-contoh yang lain dekat sini dia ada banyak handout. Kat sini example. Okey, saya bagi searching punya link je lah kat sini. Okay, just now for for the uh, online quiz tu yang kat sini yang Sound Foundry ni ialah yang ni saya bagi dia punya uh, link. Okay, you can refer to this online quiz or other online quiz that that appear here. Okay, uh, rule of inference on online quiz boleh juga tengok kat sini. Okay, select all control C. Okay, this is the online quiz punya searching. Okay. Okay, so before we proceed with question 6 just now. Okay, kita pergi tengok soalan 6. Sebab soalan 6 ni dia memerlukan kamu tengok daripada, okay, daripada lecture 1. Nah, kat sini dia perlukan kamu mahin nak refer table mana dekat sini. Page 20, 21 and 22. Then from lecture 2 from uh, page ni yang uh, rule of inference ni. Hmm. Untuk jawab soalan 6. Okay so now we go for question 6. Okay so here uh, rule of inference untuk yang ni ialah. Okay so sekarang saya. Ini saya record kalau kamu nak tengok balik. Kalau kamu tak faham nanti boleh tengok balik. Lepas kamu buat exercise yang daripada internet tu. Kamu nak cuba balik problem 6 ni boleh. Okay so now here we define it first. Okay so saya uh, saya define R. R is raining. Saya bukan define not raining eh. Saya define day raining R. Okay so then F is foggy. R is raining. Okay. Then F is foggy. Okay, so nanti lepas kita buat statement tu nanti. Kalau dia kata not, kita kena letaklah negotiation dia kan. Okay. Okay, so R is ready. Then F is for problem C eh, foggy. Then after that is a uh, sailing race will be held, tu kan? Okay, so S ialah sailing race. Ah, uh, 
will be help to then lagi apa yang ada trophy will be awarded life saving demonstration will be go on so l l ialah life saving tu saya define dulu okay will be help okay eh, life saving demonstration will go on okay so selling dah ada uh, trophy will be awarded okay so c c is trophy will be awarded trophy eh? okay so sekarang untuk yang ni kita punya parameter ada r t s l n t okay so ada lagi tak yang saya tak define cukup rasanya kan bukan sebab akhirnya trophy was not awarded okay so here Go to the premise. Macam mana kita nak uh, premise yang pertama ni ayat dia panjang kan? So how can we symbol the first premise? Okay, it is not R lagi or not F implies the S and L. Okay, this is premise one. Okay, so premise tu apa? S then T. This is premise 2. Then premise 3 is not T. Betul tak? Okay, this is premise 3. Okay, so the final answer ialah R. It rain. Ha, kan? So, macam mana kita nak buktikan this kenyataan ni valid? Okay. So, sekarang macam mana? Macam tadilah kita kena refer dekat table semua. But we have to get an idea. Idea dulu. Macam mana kita nak 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 buktikan sampai bawah? Okay. Sekejap saya padam yang ni. Saya padam semua je lah. Okay. Okay, so sekarang kita ada yang pertama. Kita ambil, dia tak kisah tau. Yang pertama ke yang akan, ah, kamu rasa yang mana mudah dekat kamu. Okay, so sekarang, cuba. Untuk yang ni. Okay, yang pertama tadi, premise one. Kita nak mula, kita nak nak buktikan. Not R, lepas tu O, not F. Then S and L. Okay, yang ni ialah premise 1. Okay, from this premise 1, kita tahu kita punya conclusion yang bawah sekali ialah R. But in premise 2, premise 2 kita apa? Uh, S then T. Premise 2, premise 2. Okay, then premise 3 kita ialah not T. This is premise 3. Okay. Macam mana ideanya supaya kita dapat R kat bawah? Kamu nampak tak kat sini dia ada R kat dalam ni. Tapi dia not R. Lepas tu dia dalam statement yang panjang ni. Okay. Dan in order to get that particular R, kita kena keluarkan semua tu dengan menggunakan maklumat yang ada kat sini. Kita ada kat sini kan? Okay. So sekarang ideanya dekat situ yang kedua ialah kita buat kontrapositif dengan label negotiation. Kontrapositif tu yang tadi tu yang maksudnya dia sama dengan yang ni. Kita nak kontrapositif which is yang atas ni positif positif kan. Sebab kalau kita letak not dekat luar kita refer dekat yang tadi page 20, 22 eh, yang daripada lecture 1 tu. Okay. Kita letak not, jadi yang ni akan letak kat belakang. S and L dan not dekat luar, ambil yang dalam ni. Not R or not F. Yang ni kita refer dekat kontra positif and double negotiation. Double negotiation tu yang sebab kita nak ada not not dekat dalam ni. Okay, so ni kita guna kontra positif. Ada yang macam tak nampak 
Ya sebab kamu macam tak cukup latihan tapi dah kena buat soalan nombor 6. Yang 6 ni tak apa. Lepas buat latihan semua dah faham cuba buat nombor 6 balik. Okey. Nombor 3. Nombor 3. Lepas kita dapat yang nombor 2. So pergi ke nombor 3. So that I can use R. Yes can. Stephen if you want to prove from R then you get the first premise. Yes you can. Okay, so nombor tiga apa? Nombor tiga sekarang lepas kita buat kontra positif dan nombor double negotiation. So, I use the uh, De Morgan law. So, now I use the De Morgan law and double negotiation so that I get this not S or not L then R and F. Okay, R and F. This is, I'm using the D. Morgan law and double negotiation. So now here, you, you can see that our R is not, not R. So, kita punya aim kat belakang ni macam terhasil lah kan kat situ. But here, okay, so now number three, number three, number four. Okay, number four. Use our premise which is S then T is P2. Premise 2. Then number 5, kita nak use our premise now. Okay, not T as our premise 3. So, yang bawah ni saya padam dulu ya. Sebab uh, belum lagi dapat conclusion. Okay, so now what I'm going to do. Okay, so now you look at here. Which is S here. It's in number 3, it contain not S. So, from here, number 4 and number 5, so we can use model stolen, then we get not S. So, not S, so kat atas ni kita dah dapat not S. Okay, so that's the idea. So, we get not S from 4 and 5 by using model stolen. Okay, from 4 and 5. Five. Okay, after we get model stolen, uh, not S. So number seven, our next step is, so try to develop this. Uh -huh. Okay, how can we get this by using what? Addition. Addition, kita boleh tambah apa-apa. Kamu tengok rule addition dekat dalam table tu, which is not S, kita tambah. Or not L, we can produce this by using addition. Addition, addition from, addition eh, from 6. Ah, from 6 tu kita dapat addition. Okay, so nombor 8. Ha, okay, sekarang kita pergi ke nombor 8. Nombor 8, kita teruskan lagi. Nombor 8, okay, from here. Okay, R and F. Okay, so look at this, number 7. Ni kan sama kan dengan number 3? Nampak tak? Bila dia sama, dia macam P, P dan Q. We produce P and our fans, uh, last answer is Q. Macam modus ponen sebenarnya. Sebab yang depan ni sama. So, kita boleh bawa keluar yang belakang ni. Which is nombor 8. Kita boleh produce R and F by using what? Modus ponen from 3 and 7. 3 and 7. Modus ponen. So, we get R and F. So, now we get R here. So, number 9. If we have this, so then we can simply get our final conclusion which is R. R and F. Then we get R by using what? Simplification. Just now. Yang macam soalan contoh berapa mana tu? Okay. Simplification. So, we get this final answer. Then we can conclude this statement, this this statement is valid. Okay. Any question? If you can't understand, please do the exercise that I showed previously. Then come back to this type of question. Okay. Because this needs skill. Memang betul-betul perlukan skill. But once you have that particular skill, dapat soalan apa pun kamu boleh jawab. Okay. But jangan tinggalkan terus soalan ni eh, sebab in order to define tu pun kita dah, dah bagi jalan kerja punya markah. Okay so for this for problem 7. Okay. 
question kita nak provekan problem 7 yang ni dia dah tak refer dekat yang rule of inference tu but we have to use the mathematical punya proofment okay so the information that we get from here is we know that a b is a real number then a is less than b and is less than zero okay even though it's real number but from this information, we know that our A, B is negative number, right? Because it's less than zero. Okay. Now, first, if we have A is less than B, when we time it with A, we get what? Contohnya, kalau A lebih kecil pada B, lebih kecil pada kosong ni, kita wakilkan dia sebagai negatif 2, lebih kecil daripada negatif 1 dan lebih kecil daripada kosong. Okey. Bila yang pertama ni, yang A is less than B, yang first yang first ni, ini, kita times dengan A, kita dapat apa? A kuasa 2 dan A kali dengan B. But here, the notation here. Lebih kecil ke lebih besar? Kalau kita letak A kita negatif 2 kan? Negatif 2 kali negatif 2 ialah 4. Then negatif 2 kali dengan B, B kita negatif 1 dapat 2 kan? So 4 is lebih besar daripada 2. Ha, nampak dia terbalik. Nampak tak kat situ? This two information is really important. Okay then. Then this is the first punya ni dan kalau yang pertama punya statement ni kalau kita darab dengan B statement yang pertama kita darab dengan B kita akan dapat dapat apa? A B is kat sini ialah apa? B kuasa 2 betul tak? kat sini A sebab yang pertama ni kan yang ni tadi first statement is A is less than B so bila kita times dengan B kita akan dapat A kali dengan B A B dan B kali dengan B ialah B kuasa 2 but here the symbol the symbol is A kali dengan B ialah 2 B kuasa 2 ialah berapa? 1 kan? so sekarang kita tahu bahawa 2 lebih besar daripada 1 so from Ni kita dapat dua dan yang ni ialah persamaan yang ketiga. Okay. So now we combine dua dengan tiga. Dua plus tiga. So we get what? Kita akan dapat apa? Kita akan dapat ni. A kuasa dua lebih besar daripada AB. Kita nak combine kan sebab ni sama. AB dan dia juga lebih besar daripada B kuasa 2. So uh, ni, yang ni maksudnya kita boleh conclude that yang A kuasa 2 memang akan sentiasa lebih besar daripada B kuasa 2. So terbukti. Okay. So dapatlah yang akhir. Okay. Boleh? Ada soalan tak untuk problem 7? That's how we prove using mathematical way. But you have to find the information yang dia bagi. Ha, ni information yang dia bagi. Okay. Now try to look at problem 8. Okay. Macam mana problem 8 ni? Kita nak provekan dia. Pertama sekali sama juga. Tengok information yang dia bagi. Dia kata A dengan B tu real number. Dan dia kata A ni sentiasa lebih kecil daripada B. Lepas tu dia suruh provekan benda ni. Okay. So sekarang when, when you want to prove it, you... Look at the final answer which is dia ada tambah kat situ. How can uh, we put tambah from this statement? Okay, bila kita ada A is less than B, kita nak put tambah, tambah tu. Maksudnya boleh tak kita letak kat sini, dekat first equation ni, kita letak tambah B dekat kedua-dua belah. Which is dia akan jadi A tambah B is less than B tambah B. Ha, nampak tak? Nak tahu less tu betul ke tidak? Okey, contohnya kalau kita ada sat, uh, contohnya kalau kita ada macam ni lah. Satu lebih kecil daripada dua. Kalau kita darab tak tambah, kita dapat ni kan? Which is B dua tambah dua lebih besar daripada satu tambah dua kan? Okey, betul lah kita punya ni inequality ni. Okey, now so, in order to get this, so get here, we get A tambah 
B lebih kecil daripada 2 B. Selesaikan persamaan ni. Okay, then here A tambah B, we can put 2 to the left which is we get divide by 2 then it less than B. Okay, this is the final answer. So, terbukti. Boleh. Ada soalan tak? Kita dah habis ni tutorial 2. Okay, so hopefully you can understand what I'm uh, discussing just now with you. Uh, okay, so here is the attendance for today, 23%. Okay, so we finish with tutorial 2, then tomorrow we'll uh, have the lecture 3. I recorded the lecture 3, then put inside the you learn, then you go through the lecture 3 first, then do the exercise that I give for attendance. Then, if you don't understand the lecture 3, please ask me while the tutorial session next week on Wednesday. Okay. Boleh, okay. Dah tu saja. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Good luck. Thank you, madam. Thank you.